Think about this. There are cities that never had mosquitoes that now had mosquitoes. Those cities were built where they were built to get above the line where mosquitoes lived. And now those cities are full of mosquitoes. That is just one of thousands of different links in the chain that have been wrapped around themselves. So, you know, my main concern is methane. It's always been methane. And the problem with methane is, is it produces an opportunity, believe it or not, for methane consuming bacterium. It's happened in our past. It's happened on Mars. That's what they think happened. Is these, you could, instead of having the, the Earth run out of control with, with heat, it would get cold. Methane is, methane warms our atmosphere much more effectively than carbon dioxide. But these little creatures might just go, ah, oh, yeah, this is a really nice place. We like this. There's plenty of methane here. We have to be careful that as the upper part of the planet thaws and methane becomes readily available, that we don't have mutations that create bacterium that like to consume methane. It would be nice if we have one that produced, uh, that, that like to eat carbon dioxide, but then that could also run out of control because carbon is the basis of life for us. And you wouldn't want a mutation that decided it liked to eat everything that had carbon content. All these weird things, the, the, the experiment we started is so above and beyond our intellectual capacity to understand that it's a joke. We don't have supercomputers that can tell us all of the different links and facets of the microbiologies and how those, you know, biological economies relate to each other. You know, you can't rob Peter to pay Paul in nature. She refuses to play that game. Yeah, it's hard to say what's going to, I mean, at one degree, that's what, one degree is the difference between water and ice. One degree, okay? Ice, water, one degree. You see, we look at that as something really, really, really small and insignificant, okay? But phase transitions, the smallest temperature makes a difference. We don't understand what we've done to our planet. Uh, and if, uh, 30 years from now, we'll have a better understanding because of the lag in carbon going near the atmosphere versus reaction, okay? It takes 30 years, basically, for the carbon going into the atmosphere today to have its accumulative effect in 30 years. Got that? We don't know what's going to happen. Um, I can tell you physically... What will happen? Um, I mean, I can I can grasp, you know, uh, methane hydrate deposits. You know, the, the the thawing of the the permafrost, what causes it? The feedback loops. The you know the, why Thwaites is endangered. I mean, I can give quite a spiel on it because it's what I've been studying for the last what thirty five years. When it comes to life. Man, no. I, mm. I don't care who you are. You could be like the smartest biologist on, on the fucking planet. And I can tell you that there's probably literally a million bacterium and a million different viruses frozen somewhere in that layer of permafrost, okay, that one day are going to be released into the atmosphere. Man, you see the feedback loops. There comes a point where you cannot, you cannot turn back the feedback loops. Right now, the petrochemical industry is building this fervor. 
They're lighting a fire under everybody's fucking ass, making everyone's hair stand up on end. Oh, energy, 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 oil, gas, 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 gas. God, I've seen just beating me to fucking death in the news about it, okay? Now, listen, we should be talking about new battery technologies and getting the fuck off that shit. Any rational being understands that right now we are already in trouble and it is inevitable that the only thing we can do right now is mitigation. Anyone that tells you anything different, okay, is they're wrong. They believe in thermometers, but they don't believe in climate change. And see, they want to make this big rumble, this giant fucking noise about energy and gas, energy, gas. Listen, we, we should have been done with that 20 years ago. You see, in 2017 was the breaking point for certain feedback loops to be initiated that we could not turn back. And those are now, are now running, and, and they're not just running, but they're running at an accelerated rate. We didn't have heat domes over Greenland five years ago. All these things were predicted by me and, and thousands of scientists all over the world because it was obvious what was happening. But the megaphone machine from the petrochemical industry and purchasing and buying your representatives, congressmen, senators, okay, and presidents, some. Uh, yeah, they're, they're, still, they're still in control and pumping that shit out of the fucking ground, burning it as fast as they can. Turn, from turning it into plastics to put it in the ocean and, and, and destroying the atmosphere with the rest of the product and getting paid billions upon billions of dollars to do it. It's insanity. It is total fucking insanity. It's an experiment that we started. We don't know. You see, when you think about mosquitoes, we're always down here. And so we're going to build, you know, Nairobi up here. It's so complicated. Just millions upon millions upon millions of different connections that you just can't... You couldn't possibly put them in, in in any format where you could get an answer at the other end that said, "Do this to save yourselves." I I I, I don't think that answer exists right now. If 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 in 2017 we had outlawed uh, carbon as a criminal, poisonous, uh, you know, Schedule One fucking, you know. Um, we, we might have had a chance. But you see, at this point, I'm prepping my grandchildren for, to be realists about the future they will be living in and how to prepare for that and be smart about it. Where to be, what to go, what to, you know, how, how to at least try to live a reasonable life. Because it's not, they are not going to inherit the world that we did. So, yep. The biological part of this, the physical part, easy to understand. It's simple numbers, physics, real easy to understand. You know, when glaciers melt and this population gets all of their water from glaciers, and this glacier has now decreased by 67% over the last 40 years, then you know that it's only a matter of time before this entire population of 50,000 people is going to have to move. Where are they gonna go? Who's going to accept them? Who's going to help them? Oh, fucking town, city. That's a, a culture, civilization almost. You know what I mean? Some of these Andean uh, uh, cities will be fucked. Any place. India. A lot of places get their water from glaciers. What happens when that stops? We just, we, we, the, it, everything is so complicated. It, it just can't be done. I can tell you the physical things that are going to happen, but the biological things, man... That makes the physical probabilities nothing. What could happen biologically to eliminate us is probably a greater threat than just more water. You see, when all of the ice melts, all of it, the North Pole, South Pole, Greenland, when all of that ice melts, there will be approximately 500 feet of water in some areas, more in others. 
600 to 600 plus feet in others. I sit just above that line. I'm at 560 feet here. Now, if you... Everyone's shit in their pants about six feet because six feet wipes out millions upon millions upon millions of acres of farm ground and civilized people living. Can you imagine 500 feet of water? See? That's a scary fucking thought. So, right now, unless we get some sort of miracle technology or help from outside... Uh, yeah, the human race is going to alter significantly. It's going to change significantly if we survive at all. But I don't, the, out, the outcome of this experiment, I, I see is not going to be good no matter what. We started it and we, we denied that it was running, actually. We let it go in the lab, a very dangerous experiment. We let it go in the lab year after year. Everyone knew it was fucking dangerous, but for some reason called money and greed, you know, got to have that fucking yacht, got to have that second home in the Hamptons. Uh, yeah, human nature. Human nature is the, the, uh, the X in the, in the equation. It's really an unknown, you know what I mean? Uh, God, we, we, we fuck shit up so fast in so many ways <laughs> so many bad choices, so many bad decisions for, for, for all for the exact same reason, money. Now, is that not the animal? Is that not the animal? Yes, it is. That's the cheek pouch animal that's just shoving the hands weren't enough. An armful wasn't enough. They had to develop big old cheek pouches too so they could just can't fucking get enough. Yeah, the experiment's running. The outcome I don't see as good. This is why I tell people don't, don't, don't sub to my page because this is what you're going to hear about. As long as you come here and watch videos, I will be talking about this. And every time some publication denies it's happening or says the term thirty years, see their favorite term was fifty years before. They've learned that that's too far for people to people get scared when they say fifty years now. So now it's 30 years. Oh, well, we're going to, you know, we got 30 years. And, you know, technology, of course, is going to save us. We're going to come up with some technology. Look at the, We could suck carbon out of the air and make useful items. Yeah, that's fucking fantasy land put on by the petrochemical industry. It's not going to happen. They forget to say how much energy it takes to do this. <laughs> ah, fuck. Yeah, don't sub to my page unless you're <laughs> you're a glutton for punishment in the truth. 